What's going on, guys? Welcome back once again to this year's Halloween Spooktacular. And once again, we have a new release that came out on a streaming service, and that is Cattle Lake on HBO Max. That's a real... I didn't think there would be this many streaming releases this year for the Halloween Spooktacular, or maybe I'm just paying more attention this year. Who knows? Cattle Lake stars Dylan O'Brien and Eliza Scanlon, and is about two people who have to investigate the disappearance of an eight-year-old girl on Caddo Lake. Caddo Lake is going to be an interesting movie to talk about. It's going to be interesting to see how receptive people are to this movie. It's an M. Night Shyamalan product. He didn't direct it, but he had his hand in producing it. So with that, you know that there's going to be a lot of twists and turns, especially towards the end. There might be multiple plot twists. There might be things where you can actually guess what's going to happen. That's why this movie is going to be really interesting to talk about amongst your peers. I feel like this is going to be such a divisive movie. Like almost every M. Night Shyamalan product that's out there you're either gonna really look at the twist or the twists in this movie and say oh that's actually really clever that's pretty smart or it could go the complete opposite way and be like that's the dumbest thing i have ever seen i'm really curious to see what people are going to say about those last 30 or so minutes when everything comes to a head this is really a slow burn type of mystery i wouldn't necessarily call it a horror movie because it's not that but i wouldn't necessarily call it like a sci-fi thriller just a strange mystery that takes place on a lake. What I like about a lot of the production design is that Cattle Lake is an actual place in real life that you have to use boats and dinghies to traverse. And the movie captured that perfectly. This is not an area you want to be in. The movie really captures that this is a place that is so secluded that makes it feel like you are in a creepy ass swamp. It is very swampy. It is very dank. It feels like the characters could get leeches or encounter an alligator at any second. And I'm pretty sure if you go to this place in real life, that's what would happen. So the movie really captures that creepy ass swampy vibe that it's going for and that helps build up a lot of the tension in the slow burn moments i'm not necessarily going to say that this movie is slow the first 20 to 25 minutes of this movie it's a slow burn it's building up the characters there's actually some fairly good character development here when it comes to dylan o'brien's character and eliza scanlon's character you understand that dylan o'brien has had a troubled past he has survived a tragedy so he's kind of reeling from that he's kind of in and out with his girlfriend he doesn't really know what his purpose is anymore and then eliza scanlon has a really really rocky relationship with her family so the first 20 to 25 minutes are spent building up to that but when the actual mystery occurs that's when i was really invested even though those first 20 to 25 minutes got me invested into the characters the mystery is what i was here for the mystery itself as i said you could take it either way this is a movie that I think will require at least parts of it to have multiple viewings or when you're watching it, you're going to be like, okay, wait, I missed a detail. Rewind that. This is a movie that forces you to pay attention because there are subtle clues hidden throughout the entire thing, not just those last 30 to 40 minutes where the twisty stuff starts to happen, but throughout the entire movie, there are subtle hints. And as long as you are paying attention, you're actually kind of smarter than the movie. And I'm not really a huge fan of that. There are some things that I figured out where I felt like I was one step ahead of the characters and they were two steps behind me. There were other things where I didn't even figure it out and the characters figured it out before me. There were other things that just went left unexplained. There was actually something involved in the twist of this movie that I was like, okay, that is so unclear. That is so hazy. That is so vague. What the hell was that even? It's one of those things where you might even have to go online and watch an ending explained video or Google the ending to this movie to actually figure out what one of the twists of this movie was, what a certain thing was. And I'm trying to be vague and tiptoe around talking about this because the movie does rely a lot on those twists. I'm trying to avoid spoilers because I feel like if you are talking about this movie, it's an easy movie to spoil. I don't want to tell you an element about what this movie's about. I don't want to tell you the twists, you know? So I'm trying to tiptoe as much as I can around that stuff while I'm explaining that. Yeah, it's ambiguous, but at the same time, you figure things out before the characters, the characters figure things out before you. When the characters figure things out before you, that's when the movie's at its best. When you are essentially one step ahead of the characters, that's when the movie becomes so predictable. There were things where I was like, okay, that's happening. And then it happened. I was like, yeah, no shit, because I've been paying attention for the whole movie. That's why you have to pay attention to the subtle clues sprinkled throughout 
the entire movie. I'm not really going to talk more about that. I That's where I'm going to leave it. These twists at the end are kind of a make it or break it type of twist. You'll either love them or you'll hate them and it'll kill your entire experience or you'll just have to be like, I did not understand that at all. And you'll have to do some research online as to what actually happened. I like that it left me ambiguous with a couple of things. But for a movie like this, I feel like you have to leave no questions unanswered. And there were some unanswered questions for me by the end. And that was a real disappointment of mine because that's when I had to go online to figure out what one part of this twist was all about. Dylan O'Brien is really good. He's really impressed me for years. I'm really surprised that his career didn't take off more after he made the Maze Runner trilogy because when you really think about it, he was in an adaptation of a YA novel. Usually those things, not recently, but at that point where you had The Hunger Games, Divergence, The Maze Runner, those things were taking off and they were launching the careers of almost everybody. And Dylan O'Brien has proven that he has so much range as an actor. It's crazy he's not bigger than he is. And I hope he does one day become a huge actor like that. Eliza Scanlon is also really good in this movie. I haven't really seen her in anything. I know who she is, but the way that she has to convey sadness and anger in this movie and lack of respect for her family on the outside but the respect for her family on the inside despite it not despite her not being related to her father her father in this movie is her stepfather she has to convey a lot and she's really invested in this role she's invested in the character the character is invested in the mystery and i guess that that's where i'm really standing with this movie it's got a really intriguing setup it's got some twists that i liked some twists that were left ambiguous where i was like i don't know what the hell is happening but some really good performances in the swampy creepy vibe that's why i feel like it fits in very well for a halloween spooktacular i did enjoy this movie like i said it's an m night Shyamalan product he produced it so it's gonna be very divisive and it's gonna be interesting to see what the reception from audiences is gonna be like since m night Shyamalan is a very divisive director he started off so huge with signs the sixth sense unbreakable since then he's had kind of a career lull until you get to split and then he's had a career lull again because nobody's really taking him seriously anymore. They just know him as the twists guy. And I can see that. That's essentially what this movie is. It's a lot of twists and turns. Whether you buy into it and what your interpretation is of those twists is really going to dictate your enjoyment of the movie. Despite some ambiguous things that happened and some questions that were left unanswered, I still really enjoyed Pato Lake with three-fourths of a bucket of popcorn. So if you guys do see Cattle Lake, let me know what you think of it in the comment section below. I'll leave my links to my website in the description below as well. I can't wait to do more videos for this Halloween spooktacular. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex Madden, and I'll see you at the movies somewhere.